Hello, welcome, we're back. This is uh, Big Idea 2 now. Now, Big Idea 2 is pretty easy. I'll, uh, I'll read Big Idea 2 to you. Um, the actual thing says this, chemical and physical properties and materials can be explained by the structure and arrangement of the atoms, ions, or molecules and forces between them. So essentially all that saying is, uh, let's get back down here, all that saying is bonding, bonding, bonding. Let me write that out. Bonding, bonding. Okay, you're probably tired of watching me write that. Bonding, bonding, bonding. And so um, everything that we see around us is a result of bonding, which is a result of electrons um, and protons and attractive forces between atoms. So, um, so every little bit of bonding we see around us is the result of some kind of electrostatic attraction. Um, and so <clears throat> that's actually summed up in a thing called Coulomb's Law. So you have to know Coulomb's Law to, um, to sort of understand all of bonding. And actually, at the base of all of bonding is Coulomb's Law. And so there is no such thing as a bond that doesn't occur because of electrostatic attractions. So atoms stick together and form molecules um, and, uh, and, and different things because of electrostatic attractions. And then those molecules will stick together to form liquids or solids because of electrostatic attractions. So this positive and negative thing is, is, is what determines all the bonding around us. And you might think of that only in the case of ionic, but it's actually true of all of it. So if we take a look at Coulomb's Law real quick in overview. Um, so here's the force right here. If the force is less than zero, it's an attractive force. If it's greater, it's repulsive. We'll get to that in a second. So the constant right here, of course, that fixes the units to make it work for this force over here. And Q1 and Q2 are going to be your charges and coulombs. Well, if you have an opposing charge, so you have a positive and a negative, that's going to make this a um, negative number up here divided by the distance between them squared. Okay, and so that would give you an overall negative. So if you had a positive and a negative, it would be an attractive force because it'd be less than zero. If you had two positives, right, it would be an a repulsive force, and that should make sense. So um, this is really just stating mathematically something that you already know. But, um, but a couple of things that you should get from this that are, are very, very important. And first of all is that um, the bigger the charges, or the bigger the uh, opposing charges, let's say. So if you had opposing charges, like a, uh, a positive and a negative charge, the larger they are, um, the greater the attractive force. So, um, you know, let's say I had a negative two and a positive two. So those, those are pretty big um, attractive forces between the two. That's going to be stronger than a negative one and a positive one, right? Um, and then also the distance between them, this is the r squared. So the smaller this number is, then the bigger this overall number will become. So we could say that the, that the, the smaller the distance between the atoms, or the closer together they are, the stronger the bond. So, so two things you get from this. The higher the opposing charges, and the closer together that they are, the stronger the bond. So then the opposite would be true. The smaller the opposing charges, the further apart, the weaker the bond. And that's kind of um, Coulomb's law in a nutshell. So let's go and let's look at bonding overview real quick. Uh, bonding overview is just going to take uh, a couple minutes, and you should know all of this. But atoms join together to bond mole to, to make molecules. Um, there's a couple major types of bonding that we're going to go through. Um, the two major types that we talk about all the time are ionic and covalent, so we'll go through those uh, really quick. But the whole point of bonding, right? What's the whole point of bonding? The whole point of bonding is to, um, to fill this octet, to get this, this um, complete octet. Okay, and so what does that mean? Well, they want a full S and a full P uh, subshell. So <clears throat> that's two here, six here and that's a total of eight electrons. So all atoms are going to seek to have a full S and P in their outer, outer energy level. And if they do, they seem to be stable. So pretty much all the bonding revolves around that. Um, so the, the first one we'll talk about then is um, ionic bonding. And ionic bonding is really quite simple. The idea with ionic bonding is that um, one atom 
is going to want to get rid of electrons and the other is going to want to take them. Um, now this is going to be having a very, very high electronegativity and a very, very high need for an electron. So what it's going to do is it's essentially going to take this one from sodium. So sodium has in its outer energy level, it has uh, one extra electron, right? It has a 3s1 electron and it doesn't want it because if it gets rid of that one electron, it ends up, see if it gets rid of this one electron right here, it ends up getting rid of this whole outer energy level. And so then it's got a complete octet. And then chlorine is just the opposite. If it takes this one electron right here, then it's got a complete outer energy level right there. So essentially what happens is this one becomes positive because it has one more proton than electron now, loses one. And this one becomes negative because it's brought on an electron. So then there's an attraction between these two because we have a positive and a negative charge. Um, ionic bonds always form a lattice structure where they go opposing positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative lattice structure. Um, and um, another thing that's important to know for ionic bonding, this is all ionic bonding, is it's always between a metal, which are uh, going to lose electrons, so they're always positive, so they're the positive uh, components. We call those cations, and a nonmetal. And the nonmetal, of course, is going to take electrons, and because they take electrons, they become negative, and those are called anions. Um, so, so ionic bonding is uh, primarily between metals and nonmetals. There are some few um, kind of strange little interesting things that, that happen, but you don't need to worry about that. A couple other points about ionic bonding that we need to remember is, um, well, I, just like with Coulomb's law, if I, had a, um, if I had an ionic bond between a positive 2 and a negative 2, this one here is a positive 1 and a negative 1, but let's say I, you know, I had calcium, which is positive 2, and oxygen, which is negative 2, that's going to create a stronger bond because of Coulomb's law. These are higher charges, higher opposing charges, so it's going to make your F um, a very, very, or a larger negative number in, in essence. Um, so they also, um, an, uh, they also um, depend on the size. So these are very small atoms, sodium and chlorine, and so because they have a very small size, they're closer together which means that this positive and this negative don't have much space in between them. And since they're kind of like magnets, the closer together you get them, the stronger the bond. So, so um, remember, opposing charge is greater and closer together uh, greater as far as strength of the bond goes. Um, last thing ionic solids that you need to know is that they're very bad conductors of electricity. So, um, and I, in fact, they don't conduct electricity at all, essentially. And um, so this is just solids. So the solids uh, do not conduct electricity. The reason for that is that um, all of the electrons for these opposing atoms are localized. So, so like this, this sodium atom, it doesn't share or doesn't exchange these electrons here. And the chlorine won't share or exchange these electrons here at all. And so they are, um, are going to stay localized. And because they don't move from the atom, there cannot be any flow of electrons. And without a flow of electrons from thing to thing, you have no electric flow. So the solids um, is non-conductive or non-conductor of electricity. And um, in the liquid form, though, because in the liquid form, uh, things um, are a lot more movable. Um, there is, you can conduct electricity through them, so liquid, yes. And then also in the aqueous form, as soon as they become, um, as soon as they become uh, in the, dissolved in liquid, they can flow electricity between them. And our body commonly uses that to conduct electricity. But ionic bonds, not conductors of electricity in solid, um, yes, in liquid and aqueous form. All right, in the next video, we're going to look at uh, covalent bonding. And we're going to look at um, the difference between uh, pi and sigma bonds.